Jake, tell us about one of your favorite movies this year. The Devil All the Time. I genuinely loved it. And, and I know you and I were about to get into it, but uh, I thought that this was such a fascinating movie. It is it is uh, it is a lot of different storylines. It is a, a multiple. T- it, it covers a vast span of time and it is very much uh, an embodiment of the, the, the gladiator line of what we do in life echoes in eternity. It is this sort of this idea of how one person's actions can have an impact on uh, not just their children, but then have this spider web impact and uh, almost like like a poison, how like one person's actions can really poison uh, an entire an entire generation, an entire town of people. And 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 here's the deal is that everything that Sean's going to say about so many of the reasons that he didn't like it arguably are reasons why I did. It mm-hmm. is a very somber movie. It is a downer of a movie. It is not a movie that you walk away from uh, in, a, in a chipper, happy sense. Uh, so many of the characters in the film uh, end up in a very unhappy place. There's not a lot of redemption, but I just thought that it was, it's such, it was such a difficult task covering this wide span, not just a massive span of time, but multiple storylines in a, in a mass. So, so it's like spinning 10 plates, but walking a mile while you do it. And mm-hmm. I thought that they did it beautifully all of the performances it's an incredible ensemble ca- ensemble cast so many of the the performances i thought were top notch and by the time like like there I, I didn't think that there was a false note i didn't think it missed a beat and by the time like every the movie was over all everything even though so much happened everything made sense to me all of the characters actions made sense to me and i was just kind of felt like wow like that mm-hmm. was like to me it felt like a coen brothers movie it felt like an early coen brothers movie um, like something they would have made early in their career. Um, and I, I just generally thought it was fantastic. And it's it's all I mean, granted, it's it, this means less because we're seeing fewer. But like it's I would say it's arguably guaranteed to be on my top 10 list by the end of the year. And I want to give the director credit because he shot 35 millimeter, which doesn't ever really happen on Netflix movies. Netflix generally has their filmmakers shoot digitally. I know Irishman had 35 millimeter aspects to it and also digital cameras. But the director Antonio Campos is that yes. how you? Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. He he fought. I I actually need to post this. He gave me a grand answer about this because I felt like when you're a filmmaker and you're going to Netflix, they want you to shoot digital. Mm. It's just easier. Um, and he fought back and said, "Can I please shoot 35?" And they were like, "Sure." And so, like in my opinion, I haven't seen the film, um, but to me, the movie makes a great great in uh, i guess indention into the idea that 35 can be used for netflix movies because they they want a digital look from according to antonio but uh, i I think it's great is that because they assume most of the stuff is going to play on televisions like a few netflix movies that's a great great point yeah because remember film is a grainy it's grainy right it's it, Mm -hmm. it, it, it it's not as crystal clear as like a 4k when you shoot a film on like you know these hd cameras and they project onto these 4k televisions they look phenomenal right because Mm -hmm. like the hd quality and film can look phenomenal as well but i I don't know the reasoning why netflix doesn't do a lot of film for their films but i know this film particularly that he had to fight to shoot on 35 and he did it was really cool Uh, all right so i'm my take on it is simply that i could never recommend this movie to anybody um and i think that that's that really counts against a film after it's done playing Uh, because everything that Jake says is exactly correct. The performances are really great. Um, You get to see actors who you don't expect to uh, be in movies like this playing against type. I'm talking about Robert Pattinson, uh, who does challenge himself a lot, but plays a uh, Midwestern backwater uh, preacher. The movie blows holes through the idea of organized religion and how organized religion can have a deep impact uh, on people in a rural community. It, it, it strives for huge talking points and touches on most of them. But, but it is one of those films where every plot point is further and further down the line of depression (laughs) of just like nothing good comes from anything that's set up in the film. Every single plot point ends in some horribly depressing dour situation. And I'm not saying that I needed a happy ending or a silver lining or uh, like, this is the story that they wanted to tell. It reminded me of when we were, I forget what grade we were in high school at some point when they uh, encouraged us to read the writings of Flannery O'Connor. Did you guys read Flannery O'Connor no. when you were growing up at all? Um, it was 
she's she writes uh or wrote homespun like midwestern stories that were all just like they they were kind of sick and demented but like for a reason it was like it was um almost like that gothic american gothic was the genre type of thing where things just went horribly wrong for the characters and that was by design mm. and so when i got to the end of the movie while i appreciated everything that they were going to do I, I imagined running into like people at a party and they'd be like, oh, cool. What's a great movie that you've seen recently? And if I ever told them the devil all the time, they'd come back and lynch me. Like essentially, like I'd be you can't recommend it to anyone. It's two hours and 20 minutes of just a steady march into pure depression. And so, yes, everyone in it is good. But hot damn, that is a depressing film. I want to address one aspect of this movie, which I'll, I, I don't want to say everyone's talking about, but I saw one person bring up on social media and it caused the a dog? ripple effect. Yes. OK, so I saw someone tweet about this saying, hey, just a heads up, like there's a horrific dog death in the film. Uh, so be careful. And then everyone was like, OK, well, now I'm not going to watch the movie. Which I was and like stunned that you were recommending it because you're such a dog person. OK, yeah, but 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 here here and I obviously like I, I can't watch a movie and I'm not saying that that scene didn't have an impact on me, but, and this seems like the most horrible justification. No. You don't see the dog, You like the thing that happens to the dog, you see the aftermath of. And it's horrible. It is horrible to see the aftermath of this thing that happens to a dog. But it's not like it graphically shows no, someone. You're 100% right. And so this this idea, and I didn't want to like weigh in because I didn't really know this person that had tweeted this thing. Mm. But this idea that there is this horrifically graphic dog death in this movie is inaccurate. Mm. The aftermath of it? Yes. And it's not an easy, it's a, it's a quick glimpse. Yeah. It's not a pretty one. And it's, I, I can't necessarily shake it. But there is not this horribly, horribly graphic dog death that you have to endure in the movie. No. And if there was, I, was, I, I couldn't do this. I, I was like I probably braced would for it because yeah. of that tweet. And when it happened, I was like, oh, you saw the tweet. You saw what I'm talking about. I did see. I know exactly what yeah. you're talking about. And it kind of scared me because I was thinking, like, thinking, how bad is this going to be? Sure. And when the scene in question happened, again, not to sound like a monster, but yeah. I'm like you. I was yeah. like. Oh, that wasn't really That's, all that. Like, I and it, that, and, and that be... moment is tough. But also, if that you're... moment has a very important, like, it's yeah. not for the sake of brutality. That right. that moment right. is very important to the plot and has ripple effects throughout the entire film. Also, if you want to nitpick that movie for any of the scenes like that, that's like number nine or ten of the list of scenes I would go to and be like, hey, you might want to look out for that scene. Because sure. honestly, I think Kevin is gonna, knowing Kevin. Mm. Kevin's going to have a much harder time with Spiders. the spider scene. Oh, dude, there's a that, spider that scene, scene in it. Like, I, like, like Kevin, like I like I, spiders like or like whatever. Like, I don't I don't like love them. I don't like necessarily like have a phobia. Like, Kevin, I think you you might literally have to turn the movie off when you see. This oh, moment. wait, well, you did text. You texted. The I texted. Text it, yeah, I said, Kevin, like, oh, and, and I wasn't being funny. I was yeah. like legitimately telling Kevin, like, because I know Kevin doesn't really like spider. Kevin, you might actually have a very hard time watching this scene. Yeah. I'm still scarred by arachnophobia. So I don't yeah. even know. I, I, honestly, okay, this is that movie when, squeezed into one moment. When I put on my sandals in my or, or, or shoes in the garage to go outside and take the dogs out, my first thought is, what if there's a spider in there? Remember that scene in Arachnophobia where the sure, old guy puts sure. his foot in the slipper yeah, yeah, and he yeah. gets bit and he oh, dies? Oh, I want to tell Kevin about this scene so much. Just oh, say, dude. It, uh, you, say, say can it. I, can I tell him? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Well, oh, no, do, you, do, you, do you want to cut it out? Because I just want to get Kevin's reaction. No, no. Is it a spoiler? No, no, no. no, no really. Not at all. No, not no. At all. No. Oh, okay. Well, a, yeah. a guy tries to prove something, so he takes a giant jar of spiders and dumps it, and they all just <laughs> fall on him and just start yeah. like crawling all over his body. Yeah, that's yeah. not happening. They are <laughs> horribly <laughs> realistic spiders. Yeah. Too. What, what what actor does that? The dude that was in um, the Harry. We interviewed him for the junkie. The dude that was in the Harry Potter movies. Oh, oh, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Wait, he's so like it, a it, he's it, like it, a preacher it, who's trying to prove a point about like. Uh, I used to be afraid of spiders, yeah, and and yeah. now God has given me the strength to not be afraid of spiders. So and so he dumps pours. them on himself. Yeah. and they just so, and they like you're right. They're so I think they're CGI, but they're so realistic in how oh they're like crawling God, all over like his body, hairy ah. and leggy, and just it's it's a lot, dude. <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> 